Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. Say, have you heard that the CEO of IKEA was recently elected the president of Sweden? He really likes the job, but he's taking a lot of time assembling his cabinet. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Doctor Who, Time of the Daleks, from Gale Force 9. In Doctor Who, Time of the Daleks from Gale Force 9, two to four players take on the roles of the various doctors who inhabit the Doctor Who universe as they attempt to stop the Daleks uh, taking over the universe and some other weird and kooky time travel -y things from happening. So essentially what happens here is you have your main board, which is kind of the timeline uh, with Roman numerals, kind of a descending order. Uh, Earth is along that track, as is uh, Gallifrey, I believe, which is the home world of the Time Lords. And uh, you're also going to set out some time anomalies along that track. Now, the board also has kind of three spaces around it for locations, uh, and dilemmas rather, to be uh, placed. And you're also going to have a stack of location cards and more dilemmas. You're also going to have things like uh, sonic uh, charge tokens and timey wimmy cards. Now, at the beginning of the game, each player is going to take kind of a TARDIS board. They're going to select which doctor they want to play, which may not be the same doctor they have through the whole game. Regeneration. And you're also going to, uh, like I say, take some of these uh, Sonic Charge tokens, which are a currency in the game, and some of the Timey Wimmy cards, which will also be a currency in the game. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take two Sonic Charge tokens and put them on your player board. If you have any companions, you can dismiss them in hopes of getting better companions. Uh, you can also uh, get rid of any equipment, or you can play equipment cards from your hand and put them on your player board, and then you get ready for adventure. Next, you are going to travel. You're going to go ahead and roll a die. Now, this die is either going to show a TARDIS, in which case you can move to another location. You can draw a location from the deck, and I think you can draw a couple of them and look and see which one you want to get. And they're going to have various conditions and die, uh, die roll conditions for that particular uh, place uh, in you know different time frames. So you've got a two different options to choose from there. So you can select which one you want to do, or as I say, you can go to the past, present, or future of Earth. Uh, then, if you get a location, you're going to put out two dilemmas face down on either side of it. Now, if you do roll a question mark, you just draw the first uh, location that's available. The TARDIS takes you where you're supposed to go. Next, you can go ahead and uh, try to recruit companions. You can discard some of the timey wimmy cards or some of your Sonic Charge uh, tokens in order to get the... Um, uh, select companions. You can either select companions from Earth if you're on Earth, or alien companions if you're not on Earth. You can go ahead and slip those under your TARDIS uh, so that they're showing uh, their <clears throat> their effects are showing. You can see um, kind of what die they bring to the game and how they can manipulate the die. Next, you're going to determine the challenge. You're going to go ahead. You're going to flip over a dilemma. And it's going to have some more die. So you've got the original die from the location, as well as the die from the location, or the die from the dilemma. <clears throat> You're going to see how many die total you have to roll. Now, each die has a number of different symbols on them. Now, black die, I think, has one of each. But the different colors, you know, blue, red, green, they have they, they skew in favor of, of some of these symbols more than others. And I think some of them don't have some of the symbols on them at all. So what you're going to do is you're going to assemble your die. Now, usually your doctor gives you four black die, and then the other players may give you black die or colored die, and you can go ahead and you can place them on there, but you never have more than eight die. But you, some of the companions will also let you swap out die for some of these other colored die. So you can go ahead and you can swap it out. This will maximize your chances of rolling what you need to roll. So you roll the die. Now, if you don't get everything you need, you have some options. You can spend two Sonic Charge tokens to re-roll one die, or you can spend three simply to change it to whatever facing you want. You can do that as many times as you want, provided you have as, enough Sonic Charge tokens. Now, after you've rolled everything, uh, you will get the reward. Now, a lot of times the reward will move you further along the track. Now, everybody's trying to get to Gallifrey, 
but you're working together to solve these things and you can call other people in to come and help you on adventures because you don't want the Daleks to win. But at the same time, only one person can get the Gallifrey first and that is going to be the winner. So it is a bit of a coopetition game. Now you're also going to have a Dalek spaceship, a flying saucer that is following you, and if it ever lands on one of the time anomaly tokens, then you must go to the time anomaly. You have a time anomaly come out, rather, and that time anomaly is going to give you just negative persistent problems until you take it out. So you can travel to an anomaly, you don't have to roll a die, just like when you go to Earth, you don't have to roll a die, and you can attempt to do it. Sometimes it'll take like all the green die or all the red die or some other bad things, but you can go there and you can try to to, to uh, stop those things, you can try to challenge those things and get that time anom anomaly off the board. Now frequently if you fail challenges you may have to do negative things like it may move you back or it may move the Dalek ship forward or you may put Dalek, uh, Daleks on the locations. If a Dalek is on your location it's going to make that challenge harder to uh, beat. And if you've got six Daleks out there, you're really in trouble. Because if you're ever required to place a seventh Dalek, then guess what? Game is over. You lose. Daleks dominate the Earth. Exterminate. So players are going around and around. They're taking their turns. They are getting companions. They're going to locations. They're manipulating their die in hopes of beating these challenges, in hopes of propelling them forward on the time track. At the same time, they're trying to best the Daleks and try to do their best to mitigate the effects of the time anomalies. But as I say, if ever there are uh, six Daleks out there, you need to place one more, you lose. If ever the Dalek spaceship gets to Gallifrey first, then you all lose. But critically, if one of you succeeds in getting to Gallifrey first, then that person is the winner of Dr. Doctor Who, Time of the Daleks. So, I'll tell you right now, I am not a Doctor Who fan. I don't dislike Doctor Who, I've just never watched it. Hence my referring to the timey-wimey cards as timey-wimey cards. I find that amusing. But the fact of the matter is, I just, I've never watched Doctor Who. When I was a kid, uh, some of my friends watched the old BBC one, and I think I saw a handful of episodes. I just never got into it. Had a lot of friends that started watching the updated version years ago, and, and I, it was kind of in the back of my head. I thought, oh, I'll give it a try, I'll give it a try. I just never did. And I've got the HBO Plus now. I'm thinking maybe I, maybe I should check it out. A lot of people swear up and down by it. But, you know, I, I, it just it never thrilled me. Um, the, the concept never thrilled me. Um, so, uh, Gale Force 9 sent me this game out of the blue, and uh, regardless of the IP, uh, which, you know, like I say, I don't hate, but I don't love, I'm kind of indifferent to, um, I'm going to try it, because Gale Force 9 has put out just some incredible games that I've loved, and they've done a great job with IP games, you know, Firefly is still such a good game, such a fun game, and Star Trek Ascendancy is fantastic, and I mean, just, just again and again, I mean, Gale Force 9 puts out good, good stuff. So I, I tried it. So we're playing this game, and I played it with George and Holly, and they both are familiar with Doctor Who. They've seen some Doctor Who. They're not huge fans. I mean, they're not big fans, but they like it. And so they kind of was, they were able to explain some of the concepts and ideas to me as we played the game. And so for me, the IP didn't really mean that much. Um, I kind of, you know, gathered, you know, the Daleks are the bad guys, and the Doctors are the good guys. And, there's some fun things here. There is there is regeneration that happens I didn't really get into where you kind of will swap your doctors or change out your doctors. And the game only comes, I think, with the four doctors. And um, then you can buy the expansions to get the other doctors as well. This has got the first, the fourth, the 13th, and I can't remember the other one. Um, but they've got... Um, so there, but there's a, there's a good array of doctors here to, to, to choose from. There's the four, and then you can, with the expansions, get the more. So I, I think you can get them all. And I think this is a reprint. I think they did the original version of this game a while ago because I know the covers are different um, now. Um, but I, I'm playing the game, and it was kind of interesting. I, I liked the locations, how you kind of could decide based on just the location, okay, these are the die I'm going to need, and I'm strong on these die, so maybe that's a good location to get. But then when the dilemmas come out, you don't know what they're going to be, so it, it, it kind of changes it, mixes it up. A lot of combinations, and I like that, and I think that probably means there'll be some replayability there because you're trying to do the different things. I like that. I liked how you could get the companions who would kind of mitigate and alter what you could do with the die. And, and really, fundamentally, that's what this game is, is a die manipulation game how can you best work the die to meet your specific objectives and challenges? How can you do that? So as we're playing this game, we're going around and around the three of us, and it kind of becomes apparent to me that that's what this game is. is pretty much all just about how do you manipulate the die in your favor? How do you get that to work? And it felt like there was, there was a lot of 
I mean, we're, we, it says it recommends when you play it the first time you, you don't make it quite as hard, but we played it with the full rules. And it seemed like it was challenging, it was tough, and, but it was more of a race against each other than it was against the Daleks. It felt like they presented a challenge, but not an insurmountable one. So consequently, uh, you know, the, the game was all right. I wasn't in love with it, and I think I probably would have liked it better if I l knew the IP, because to me it just felt like every game was fundamentally dice manipulated. Every round was just, okay, how do I manipulate the dice here? Okay, how do I manipulate the dice here? What do I do here? And while you could change out the companions, it seems like it, they didn't get changed out enough, and maybe that was just on me, to give me enough variety there. I think this is a fine game. I think it's, it's you know, I, I had fun with it, but it didn't blow me away. And I think really this is a case of you need to, to be a fan of the IP in order to get it. And I think if you're a fan of the IP, you'll appreciate it a lot more. You can get more into the story of it. The die, they're called the story die. I think you can get into that stuff more. I think that's where you'll be rewarded is with that. As it is, I think it's okay. Not great. I'm going to say try it before you buy it. If you like Doctor Who, I think you will appreciate this game a lot more than I did. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We also ask you, if you like this video, please give us a thumb on Board Game Geek. And I'd also ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and fun things like that. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I was recently speaking with my roommate, and he said, uh, Cody, do you know the difference between the sofa and the toilet? And I said, I don't know. And he said, so it was you. Somebody help me on my feet again And I don't know where I'm going And I don't know where I've been Please somebody help me on the solid ground It's a long time and I'll be dying Once a year I wind up in the band I'm sorry, Doctor Who? And another news today, an area woman murdered her gaming computer. <laughs>